Hey friends, it's Marie here from Marie Nicole Designs and I just wanted to bring you some tips and basic ways to use these Nouveau embellishment mousses or mousses or mousse, however you want to say it. They have embellishment mousse and they have expanding mousse and I'll talk about both of those in this video. Um, I just kind of wanted to give you a look at these mousse and just show you how to apply them to your paper. Like I said, it's just a basic overview. There are so many different techniques you can do with these. I love that you can mix them with water to get different looks as well. They come in a lot of different colors. As you can see here, there's a gold one, um, there's more of a white or platinum, there's dark blue there is just a range of rainbow colors so you can use them for so many different projects they're really easy to use you can just go ahead and apply them to your paper you can also apply them to other uh, material like I've used them on wood uh, alphabet pieces and chipboard and cardboard um, I haven't tried metal but I, I feel like it would be fun to kind of experiment with these on different surfaces so I want to show you how I just basically put my mousse on my paper if I'm building a card background. I prefer to use brushes and Nouveau has several different brushes. They have these stencil brushes and they also have those bristle brushes. Um, I prefer the stencil brushes. I feel like they help me put it on a little bit smoother as you can see here. Your brushes will stain a little bit but as long as you wash them out they're perfectly fine. No color is going to transfer onto my paper that I don't want because it is clean, it's just stained. So when you open up your embellishment mousse, there is this foil piece on the top. You can leave that on if you want. I just find that it's a little bit difficult to pull it off all on one piece. I do like to keep a covering on my mousse after I use it because that helps it um, stay moist. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. But after you open it up, you can scoop a little bit out here. And I'm using my Nouveau spatula to do this. I think these are fantastic tools to use with this mousse. It makes it really easy to work with them. I like to kind of put it out on my glass mat and just work with it a little bit. I think of it as kind of a frosting or like the name a mousse. When you put it out and you kind of stir it up or mix it up it gets a little bit creamier, a little bit easier to work with. And then I just pick it up with my brush and just brush it on. So I'm just working from one side of the paper over to the other side just brushing it on. Um, up and down but you can do any kind of other textures that you want the brush will leave a little bit of texture on your paper um, so you can keep brushing it until it's smooth like I said you can use different items to brush this on I mentioned I like these stencil brushes I feel like they give me more of a smooth application um, the other brushes work well too. Uh, once in a while you'll get a little hair fall out of the other brushes and you kind of have to pick it off of your background. And you don't, I don't really have that happening with these stencil brushes. So here is my background. It's got all the mousse on there. I'm going to go ahead and let it dry but I'm tipping it in the light so that you can see that this mousse does have a bit of shine with it. Here is the background I created by just kind of blending on two colors together to get an ombre brushed background. You can also brush this over a paper that you have put through an embossing folder. So there's lots of different things that you can do with this. So here's my background. I've got it all brushed on. I wanted to show you now, like I mentioned, how I like to keep these covered. I like to put just a little bit of press and seal onto my mousse, press it down so it seals it there, and it's going to keep in all of that moisture. And then I just twist that cap back on. You can also trim the extra paper that's on the sides. Just trim it down to sides so it's not a huge piece of press and seal on your uh, emboss or in your embellishment mousse jar. <laughs> Can't talk this morning. So I want to show you also that you can stencil with this mousse. You can layer it on top of another mousse. Um, you can layer these together once it's dry and you put another mousse on top of it. It's not going to run. Like I mentioned earlier, if you work with this a little bit, it gets a little bit creamier. So you can definitely put it out on your glass mat, work with it, and then have a little easier time spreading it. I'm just using another color of embellishment mousse with my spatula to spread it onto these snowflakes. I think this is really fun. You can stencil different designs onto your background. Once it dries, it's going to dry with a little bit of shine and sheen and it's going to look really pretty. 
Now, if you put a thin layer of this mousse on, like I did with the stenciling brushes, it really doesn't take much time at all to uh, dry. If you wanted to make a lot of backgrounds at once, um, if you brush on a bunch of mousse, by the time you get to the last um, background, the first one's probably going to be dry because it really doesn't take that much time. If you go ahead and you stencil on some of this mousse, it is going to take a little bit longer to dry because you are putting it on a little bit thicker. You can hit it with your heat tool. I prefer to let it air dry, that way I don't get any bubbling or warping with my mousse, but it's perfectly fine if you wanted to hit it with your heat tool to speed up that drying process. So I'm just taking this spatula, making sure I've got all of these openings in the stencil filled, going from both directions. I am being really careful not to try to push any of that mousse under my stencil. Um, sometimes if you're not careful, if your stencil isn't down on your paper, it can kind of leak through, but that's true with any kind of stenciling you're doing and any kind of medium that you're using over a stencil. So just try to be careful to make sure that your stencil is down on your paper and you're not pushing any of that medium underneath it. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish up this background here. Like I mentioned, I do prefer to let it air dry. Um, so that's what I'll do with this background when I'm done with it. Otherwise, once you're done putting all of your mousse over your stencil, you can use your spatula and just kind of scrape up any of that extra and put it back into your jar and save it for later. So here I'm just carefully peeling up that stencil. You can see that it kind of likes to stick to that background. So be careful peeling it up so that you don't mess up any of your beautiful background. And I think it just looks fantastic. If you get any of that mousse hanging off the side, I just take my finger and run it along the edges just to kind of clean up the sides and let it dry nice and clean. Now with your stencils, with your brushes, I do like to take them to the sink right away and wash them. Here is an, an example of a card where you can die cut a background and use the mousse on that. So I've got two cards here. One, I um, put mousse on the die cut, and the other is that negative piece that had the design that was left after I moosed that background. So you can get two backgrounds in one. I have a video on that that I will link if you wanted to go watch that as well. I'm giving you a look at the expanding mousse now. Now, <laughs> don't judge my expanding mousse. I know this jar is almost empty. I thought about using a full jar, but then I thought, why don't I show you what happens when it starts to get a little bit crumbly? So this jar is almost done. Um, this mousse is getting very thick, very crumbly. Um, it's almost to the point where you might want to throw it out, but you can still use it if you want to. This is why I like to put my press and seal over my jars, so it kind of helps lock in some moisture. Um, but if it gets crumbly like this, um, this is still at a point where I can work with it and keep um, working with it and it does kind of soften up a little bit. It's going to be a lot harder to apply over a stencil so I really did work a lot harder with this mousse than I did with one that you would have just opened. So drying out is definitely something that can happen with your mousse if you don't cover it and um, if you don't take care of it properly, but you can still use this mousse. It just takes a little bit longer to work into your stencils. Now, what, well, I mentioned, sorry, um, that this is the expanding mousse. So I want to show you what happens when you use the expanding mousse. So I'm just going to go ahead and cover this whole background. I'm peeling off that stencil. Like I mentioned, I'm going to throw it in the sink um, and wash it up so it doesn't dry onto my stencil. But here's the expanding mousse. Now you could leave it like this and just let it dry. It would like look like our first background. But I hope you can see with my heat gun, when you hit it with your heat tool, that expanding mousse just pops up. Up, and it looks like snow. If you want some dimension on your background, it's really fun to play with. If you do mixed media or anything, I just thought this was perfect for snow. I've also used this with a star stencil and had those stars puff up against a nice background. So this expanding mousse is really fun to play with. It's very similar to the embellishment mousse because you could just leave it and let it dry flat. But you can also puff it up. So I think this is really fun. I hope you could see some of those puff, puff up. I think that's the most fun about using this mousse is just hitting it with your heat tool and watching it just expand. So I hope you can see the texture now as I'm tipping this in the light. These are really puffed up. It really does give you some good texture. 
So here are my two backgrounds, side by side, the expanding mousse and the embellishment mousse. They're similar, but they give you different results. So like I mentioned, I've used the expanding mousse with some stars before. Here's a little close-up of those star stencils I've used on a layout, and they just puff up and add some fun texture even on a tone-on-tone -tone card or project. So now I want to show you how I like to use this mousse in more of a subtle way, not to create a whole background, but to maybe add some splatters, some texture, and some shine to a card without completely overwhelming it. Since this mousse can be mixed with water, you can kind of water it down and make a little mixture. I like to take usually gold because if you follow me, you know I like to put gold and shine on all my cards. Um, so I usually take my gold and I mix it with a little bit of water. I pick it up with my water brush that I'm using here. And you can kind of work with it, get it to the consistency that you want. I wanted mine a little bit waterier, so I added some more water. And I'm just picking it up with my brush, and I'm going to splatter it onto my background. Now, you can do this with any color. It doesn't have to be just gold, but when I add splatters, I usually like it to kind of stand out a little bit without being too overwhelming. I like it to add a little bit more interest and texture, so I usually grab my gold just as some random embellishments. But you could use this with white if you wanted to put it on a dark background, make stars, because I have done that with cars in the past. Here's one example where I made this starry, wintry sky background and splattered on some white Nouveau mousse for stars. So I think splattering with this and being able to mix it with water is something that's really fun and really unique with these mousse. Now, like I mentioned, you can mix it with water. So I'll be honest, this is the first time I've tried this technique. And I know there are probably many other techniques with mousse, but these are just the ones that I've chosen to go over with today. But I'm going to use my little Nouveau spray bottle. I've got a little bit of water in there and I'm going to add some mousse to this spray bottle. Now, like I showed you previously, this mousse will mix up with water. So if you put it in your bottle, shake it up, you have made your own sort of shimmer spray. Now, this is not going to be opaque. It's not going to be um, fully covering like the sparkle spray from Nuvo would be, but it will give you a subtle color and some shine to your projects. You can choose how much mousse you want to put with your water. If you have more water, it's going to be more watery. If you have more mousse, it's going to be more concentrated. So you kind of decide and play around with that ratio to see where you want it. I would suggest using a piece of scrap paper to kind of test it out before you bring it to your project and make sure that the surface you're working on is covered or protected because you're spraying a medium all over the place and if you don't want it on something just take measures to protect that but I'm just really shaking this up I'm trying to look inside there to make sure all those pieces are being dissolved into the water I don't know if using warm water would help it dissolve a little bit better or not um, I haven't tried that like I said this is my first time trying it but then you can just go ahead and spray it and I'm spraying it onto a watercolor cardstock and like you can like I mentioned and you can see here it does give it more of a light translucent kind of feel it's not opaque it's not going to completely cover your background and I apologize for my camera is trying to focus on my heat tool instead of my watercolor paper but you can go ahead and dry this and you can see that it's dried back a lot lighter than it looked at first but the great thing is you can take your water bottle and spray some more on the top and kind of build up that color if you want to. So using it as a spray is kind of a fun and experimental thing that I haven't um, done a whole lot of. Um, but I'm looking forward to kind of seeing if you can mix colors, seeing if you can make it more opaque by adding more mousse, seeing if the temperature of the water um, just kind of changes how it dissolves. And so there's a lot of different things that I think would be fun and worth looking into with this technique. So that's basically a look at how you can basically use these mousse on your projects, just how you can apply them, use them with stencils, dry them, mix them, splatter them. They're so much fun to play with. I hope this has given you some inspiration. If you have any questions or comments, post them down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.